As well as hosting the Pro Tools Factory Essentials and many other incredible sampled instruments, Contact Player is a creative sampler plugin you can use with any of your sounds in Pro Tools. Let's look at how to turn any one-shot sample into a playable instrument. Here I'm looking at the 808 Mutations pack from the Pro Tools Sonic Drop collection. You can see it's a set of audio samples. I love these Analog Hearts versions. I could drop these onto the timeline, but I want to be able to play and sequence notes with this sound. I'll add the contact plugin to my first instrument track, then close the library view. Next, I'll drag the sound into contact and it will appear in a new leap instrument. If I expand the window down a bit, you'll see that my sample's been placed onto a slot, triggered by the C3 key. This is great for loops or drum hits, but I want to pitch this sample across the keyboard. To do that, I'll switch to single mode. The C3 key is going to play the sample at its original pitch, which is great for this sample, which is a C. If you use a sample that's a different note, you can set that here as the root note and the sound will be pitched correctly on the keyboard and the MIDI editor. For this sample, I'm also going to switch to the classic sampler mode. Now let's add a bit of flavour with the Spice Rack plugin, which you can grab from Avid Link. Let's try creating something in Leap with a deeper sound design element. I've got a couple of files here which I sampled from the classic Korg M1 synth. I want to layer them to create a new instrument patch. Let's start with this voice pad and drop it in. I'll set it to single mode so I can play across the keys and choose the classic sampler engine. Now when I let go of the key, the sound stops, but I want it to fade off. In the sound page, I can add some amplitude release and the sound will fade smoothly when I release the keys. Notice that the sample has been recorded with a slow attack. So if I add attack on the envelope control, it won't have much effect. But if I want a sharper attack on the sound, I could adjust the start point. I can also filter the sound from here. In this case, I'm going to use the high pass mode to remove some of the low end muddiness and add some emphasis with the resonance. I'll set the key tracking to 100% so that this filter character will follow the pitch. Now you can see this is a long sample that slowly dies away, but eventually it will stop. I want this patch to be a pad that can be held indefinitely. To do this, I'll go back to the playback engine page and enable looping, and this will loop the sample between the points set with the loop markers. I want the sound to sustain near the end where it's quite quiet and filtered. Let's turn off the grid and set the points around about here. With some trial and error, you can find a clean loop point. And a good trick is to use the ping pong loop for the smoothest response. This sound has got some reverb baked in, but let's add a bit more in the send section. I want to add a second layer to this sample patch using a second sound. To do that, I'll select the next empty slot in the instruments list, then drag in my second sample. This creates a second leap player, which will also respond to my mini notes. I'll set it to single mode, and for now, solo this leap in the list while I edit it. This sample doesn't have an obvious pitch, and Leap has interpreted it as a G, so I'm going to manually reset the root note to C. Now this sound has rhythmic elements and a modulated sweep. 
If I use the classic sample mode, this will get slowed down or sped up at different pitches. The melodic mode works great here because it time stretches at different pitches to keep the playback speed the same. Let's add some release to the sound to match the first layer. And we'll add a loop so we can hold a sustained note. The last step is to use the instrument mixer controls to set a balance between the layers. <laughs> 